Hey, what's up everybody? Abbas here from Golden Motor. Today I'm going to be showing you how to convert this 68 millimeter bottom bracket on a BBSO2 Bafang into a 100 or 120 millimeter bottom bracket. I'm going to show you that right now. So the Bafang BBSHD, which is a 1000 watt motor by Bafang, that's the one that comes in a 68 millimeter bottom bracket kit. 100 millimeter and 120. But if you had a BBSO2, which is 750 watts and below in both 40, 48 and 36 volts, um, most of the time you didn't have an option for a fat bike. So this is a game changer. So this modification kit, it comes with a new axle. It makes, it comes with an adapter to make the bottom bracket bigger. And then it comes with the corresponding um, bolts and spacers that uh, can attach to your motor after you're done with the conversion and there is a bearing that comes with it that we're going to show you how to install it. So I'm going to show you step by step how to install this modification kit just in case if you want to convert your bike your motor from a 68 millimeter all the way up to 100 or 120. So the first step you want to do is take out this rubber seal right here. You need something sharp. Uh, I'm going to be using this scribe right here. Um, unfortunately, there's no dent in here to take it out. So you will make some cosmetic damage to the rubber seal. You most likely you'll be able to salvage the rubber seal. But um, if you do damage, it's like five bucks to change it out. So let's take out this rubber seal. I was working on it before I turned on the camera. So there's a little bit of hole right here to play with. There we go, came out. See that this one has a little bit of cosmetic damage, but I think it's, it's you can put it back in. So that's the first step right there. Next step is to remove the two retaining nuts over there. Uh, for something like that, you need this uh, Bafang axle removal tool. You don't technically need this as long as you have something that has like two tabs that you can fit in there and just turn it. That should work too, but just for ease, I'm just gonna use this. So you just gotta fit it in there and then turn it. There we go. Okay, one of them is out. There's one, and there's another one in there. So let's loosen that one too. There we go. So this actually, this shim came out also. So there's a shim and there's another retaining. So, so far we've taken out two retaining nuts and one shim right here. Next step is to take out the ball bearing. Um, you can use a piece of plier to take it out too, or you can just turn it over and oh, just tap it a couple of times. I have styrofoam right here. So, okay, there we go. It's out. It's the ball bearings. So the next step, we're gonna turn the motor over and we're now gonna remove seven of these screws right here that are covering the main steel gear. Let's take these out. Okay, so once you have the drive cover removed, just take the drive cover out. There we go, nice and greased up. Then next we have to remove the shaft assembly right here, it should pop out once we have everything. There we go. So just in case you've ever wanted to replace your pass sensor, that's where it goes. There's a couple, there's a ball bearing over here too. So take that out. And then there is a thrust bearing right here. Uh, so we'll take that out also and make sure you keep all your parts separated So on this side and then there's a snap ring right here Um, yeah, we have to take that out. So there's a snap ring right here So we have to take that out. So let me get my tools and I'll take that out too. Okay, so I got my snap ring pliers right here time to take the snap ring out There we go. 
now we can just jimmy this pedal assist sensor out. There we go. The next step is to remove the axle from the main steel gear. Uh, first, we have to take out these five screws right here, and then we have to use two jack screws right here to push the flange against the main steel gear so it kind of pops off. And I'll show you that in a bit. Let me just take these five screws off. Next step, we have to take this flange off the main steel gear. So for this, you're gonna need two M4 bolts. Um, if you don't have any lying around, then a cool trick is actually, to, I took it off this uh, controller that's holding to the motor. So I got my two from there, and you wanna screw these in right here in these hole, two holes right there, and screw it in with your hand until you feel resistance. So once you have both of these screwed on until you feel resistance, basically what you want to do is um, turn it half to one turn, um, but make sure you do it evenly because you don't want to do one side and then it pushes out at an angle. So basically what you're doing is these bolts are pushing against the main steel gear and it's popping out the flange. So you want to do it simultaneously. There we go. And it pops out. Just in case if you're wondering how to change the uh, clutch on a BBSO2, this is where your clutch will be. So let me just put that back and let's on to our next step. So once you have it removed from the main steel gear, uh, next step is to take this uh, shaft off from the bearing. In some cases, you might need a bearing press to press it out. Um, you do not want to use a mallet to do it. But in most cases, actually, it's not even that hard to take it off. So you just got to put a little bit counter pressure and just push it off. Oh, there we go. That was pretty easy. So now this is the old shaft. So I'm going to be converting this motor to a 120 millimeter. So this is what the modification kit comes with. It comes with two new bigger bolts, two spacers, a 120 millimeter shaft. If you're doing 100 millimeter or 120, um, the size of the bolts and the adapter will change. Um, but these are, these are the parts that are included in it. This adapter basically extends the shaft on the motor. Um, but I'm going to show you that step in a little bit. These bolts are for when you're attaching your motor to the, the motor hanger. Basically, now that since you have a longer shaft, you need longer bolts to put it on your bike. So that's what this is for. But I'm going to show you the, all that later. But now let's install this bearing onto the newer, longer shaft right here. So it should be pretty simple to do it. Make sure it's straight before it goes in. There we go. That's on. Okay, on to the next step. Okay, so basically the last step before we do the reassembly is to attach this adapter on the bottom bracket. So this is where you just need a little mallet and then gotta go at it. I'm gonna, I have it on styrofoam over here, but I'm gonna put it on a vise and do this. It'll be much more safer that way and much more easier. So I'm gonna put it on a vise and do that. Make sure it's all the way in. Um, I forgot to mention, there's a bearing that also comes with the modification kit. Basically what it does is you install it in here. Uh, you don't really need it, but it actually, you know, so that there's no horizontal play when you have the new shaft installed. So basically it will fit in somewhere around that area. So you're just gonna push this in. You can just use your hands to push it all the way in basically. There you go. Push it all the way until there's no room to go in. There you go. 
And now I'm just going to start the reverse engineering part basically. Okay, now we just got to basically put everything back together again. If you are doing a old kit, um, I would recommend re-greasing around the clutch and the moving parts like the bearings around the steel gear. But this is a new kit, so it's nicely greased. So I'm just going to put everything back together now again.